When Abby Wallace was a little girl, she was by all appearances a normal child. Rambunctious, loving, she'd run around happy. She was happy, she loved books, anything Disney, anything. But now, at only 22 years old, she struggles just to speak. I'm a pudding, pudding there. During Abby's childhood, her parents began to notice that something was off. She was diagnosed as autistic at five when we saw some minor uh, issues. The first thing we noticed was uh, speech. Her speech started to disappear. We would be around other people and ask teachers and they're like, yeah, it's, she's just, she's going backwards. She's regressing. Around the time Abby graduated from Sci Falls High School in 2016, her speech was rapidly declining. And that's when we decided we needed someone professional. We started seeing neurologists. MRIs confirmed that cells in Abby's brain were dying. We knew that there was something going on. We knew that whatever it was wasn't good. And then by pure chance, Abby's mother was working at a summer music camp when she met the mother of a young boy with a rare degenerative disease called San Filippo syndrome. It's also known as childhood Alzheimer's. A particular enzyme that helps to break down waste in the body is either uh, missing or doesn't work well enough uh, and that waste then builds up and affects uh, the organs of the body, especially the brain. The Wallace has decided to have Abby tested for San Filippo. And so our doctor said, I've never heard of it, but sure, we'll go ahead and do the urine screen. And sure enough, she tested positive, which blew us away. It's a disease with no cure. Most children that are affected by this are, are gone by the time they're typically 15, 16 years old. You know, it was very emotional, devastating, um, but we had somewhat prepared ourselves for it. it. It was like, we're not crazy, you know. There is a reason why she's regressing, but then, of course, you hear it's terminal and it's devastating. Yeah. San Filippo syndrome has now robbed Abby of nearly all her speech. It's definitely hard to come back from college and see, you know, she's not talking anymore or, you know, she's not eating by herself, that kind of thing. But there are still things that make Abby light up. She smiles while listening to music and loves to watch Disney movies. <laughs> Abby also has a caretaker, Allie, who helps keep her mind stimulated. And she takes part in music therapy. The Wallaces don't know what exactly to expect for Abby's future. Uh, we know that eventually she'll lose her ability to, to walk, to completely to be able to talk, to eat. On top of Abby's diagnosis, her mom, Kelly, is dealing with a health crisis of her own. About the time that we started seeing this decline in Abby, uh, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And so it was on top of my diagnosis, and so it was kind of a big, like, really, what did we do? We... After chemo, radiation, and surgery, the cancer seemed to be in remission. About three months after the last clear scan, uh, it had uh, metastasized to her lungs, so she's now in, in stage four. Surgery may be able to remove the tumors in Kelly's lungs, but her focus remains on Abby. And while there is no cure for San Filippo, the Wallaces are trying to raise awareness through the Cure San Filippo Foundation, a nonprofit started by a family whose young daughter was diagnosed with the disease. They're big advocates for um, finding a cure. The foundation raises funds for research in groundbreaking clinical trials, including enzyme replacement and gene therapy. The Wallaces also started Abby's Alliance, a Facebook page to raise awareness of their daughter's rare disease. Just weeks ago, they held the Abby's Alliance 5K at Memorial Park to raise funds for the Cure San Filippo Foundation. We were just blown away at the amount of people that showed up. It was incredible. The amount that we raised almost $25,000, I, I would have never thought that was possible. And through it all, the Wallaces say it's their faith that keeps them going strong. You know, when you know that your daughter or your child is going to probably die before you, you have to hold on to the hope that there's a heaven and that you're gonna be able to meet them again one day. We definitely believe that she will be in heaven and she'll be whole, she'll be disease free. And this is the whole world. And this